Hi everyone, welcome back to Respawn Aim Fire after a delay, I guess. Oh, it feels you could like say. it's been a hundred fortnights. It has been far too long. I am holding the part of you don't remember me because it's been so long. And I'm here with I'm Chad Michael Glynnis. Just kidding, Glynis. it's Innis. I've been gone so long I forgot my old name. <laughs> the only time you say it is when recording this podcast. Have you ever seen Wicked? No, I haven't. Glinda the Good Witch goes by Galinda because she's a stuck up white girl. By the end of it, she's like, you know what? I realize I'm Glinda. I'm not a bitch. That's the plot of Wicked. <laughs> Perfect. Amazing. So this is going to be our post E3 episode, which, again, is a, is a week late. We apologize for that. We had some important things yeah. that occurred in our lives that we had to um, attend to. My mom had we're a heart attack. That's it. I wasn't sure if you wanted yeah, to no, we're like, just say put it, it okay. out there. My mom okay. had a heart attack, flew home. Everything's great. Don't worry. She's okay. So basically, if you're mad at Chad for delaying this for a week, you're an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. You big but old she's okay. assholes. Yeah, she's okay. She's, she's okay. great. Because of that, I'm going to go ahead and get out in front of it. We're delaying our discussion of our barf this month for a week. Mm-hmm. So that'll be the first week of January. Ju- what the fuck is the other J month? July. July. Yep. Thank you, Chad. You're welcome. <laughs> Have you started it yet? Deus Ex? No. <laughs> I, I'll be honest. Of course I, I haven't started it. It's a game we're supposed to play. It's like reading a book for school. <laughs> it could be a good book, but you have to do it, so you're not going to do it. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I, I started playing it, and I'm, I keep wanting to play other things. We'll just leave it at that Oh, I right have now. so many things. We'll tell you what else I've played. Wait, hold it. Yeah. Shut up. We're supposed to do a cold open. Shut up. Yeah, well, we're not going into that. I wasn't going into that. I was just saying that about Deus Ex. Calm down, Chad. Calm Deus down. Deus Ex. We're starting off with a cold open. That's very exciting. Burr. I think very important this week. So chilly. So we're going to get to all our E3 stuff a little bit later on. We're going to talk about Fortnite. Oh, man. Fortnite. What's going on with Fortnite, Holden? So basically, it was announced for Switch at E3, which we've talked about in our E3 coverage yep. already, which is a big deal. It's a big game, and you can play it cross-play with all the consoles. Oh, oh shit. It, ex- except for PlayStation, because I think they're being assholes about it. Well, damn. That's unfortunate. It does have a precedent with Minecraft, however, where you can do the same thing. Crossplay with everything mm-hmm. except for PlayStation. Yeah. So basically, uh, if you use your PlayStation account for uh, Fortnite, you can't carry that account over at all. You can't bring over anything you purchased, anything you have in your save on the PlayStation. You have to start all over again if you're going to Switch or any other console. But that it's is the impacting big thing. Switch. Yeah. That's the big thing. Crossplay, we get it. You can put it in or you can't, whatever, whatever the fuck. But when... The game is designed to have – it's an account-based game, and just because you've logged in one time on PlayStation means you can no longer use it anywhere else. That's, that's the big discussion over the last week and a half. Yeah. I think I think for Sony's sake, it's not good this is happening for them. Like, this no. is bad PR for them, big time. But I think for Sony's sake, I think it's fortunate for them that the next generation is still a few years away, that they can kind of wise up a little bit. Is yep. I think that this would be really bad if this was happening – just before the next generation they have time to kind of course correct because i think this is something they need to fix by next gen yep oh they they need to fix they need to fix at least the 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 ea account or the sorry the epic games account they need to fix Mm -hmm. that right away yeah but i think that cross play is is going to be an important thing going forward it is and i think that sony needs to realize that it's not a benefit to have cross play only work on your one platform it's actually a hindrance yep People like to play games like Fortnite and Minecraft, and if they can't do it on their PlayStation with their friends, they might switch to an Xbox or a Switch. Yep. Not a the Switch, truth but an is, Xbox. <laughs> the hard truth is the gaming landscape has changed a lot in the last year, and it is yeah. going to continue in that direction with Minecraft, with Fortnite, with PUBG. Mm-hmm. Like, we're going to start having games where crossplay is just a thing that is part of gaming now, and Sony's got to yeah. realize that and catch up, even if it means that... They have to make a sacrifice a little bit financially on their platform to let people but play what with financial others. Financial stake is it really what? What financial stake do they really have in that? Well, I mean, I think John it's hurt Smedley, them financially. former ah. SOE head, Sony Online Entertainment, says he says that the deal where you cannot crossplay, as well as locking the account for Epic to your Sony PlayStation, is because of money. Basically, they don't want you to go spend the money on Xbox's console to buy an outfit. And then come back and use that outfit to play on PlayStation 4. They want you to instead buy it on PlayStation 4. I think that's a stupid way. I get it. That I think it's so a stupid, stupid way looking at it. You are benefiting by them being on your console to begin with. Yes. If they're on Xbox, that that isn't money you would have gotten anyway. And yep. because of people who have multiple consoles will now choose to go on their Xbox over their PlayStation, 
you've been you've made an even stupider decision. Like if you let your console do crossplay, those people who have both consoles, I mean, I primarily would play on my PlayStation if I had both still. But for those games like Fortnite, if I played games like that, I would go to Xbox for the crossplay functionality alone. Yep. Yep. It just it's it's a very user hostile decision, and they. Just, they just can't keep it up. And Nintendo and Microsoft are mocking them at this point for it. They are. Yeah, the, the ad that they put out, and it's like, the, first of all, the Nintendo ad that says, yeah. play together, build together, whatever the fuck it says together, and it has both mm-hmm. Xbox and Nintendo side by side. But I love all the Twitter stuff, too. Like, hey, X, like mm-hmm. Nintendo's tweeting, hey, Xbox, now that we can play together, you want to go build some stuff? And they're like, yeah. yeah, I'd love to. Like, That's hysterical. It's it's really cool. It's I mean, it's, it's also nice, too, because it's good to see the companies – speaking well of each other online yeah. and it kind of breaks up the hostility <laughs> that we see between uh we'll say people loyal to their brands now so it's, it's go ahead i'm gonna play devil's advocate for advocate for a second oh here we go sony fanboy from sony's point of view sony fanboy i see what they <laughs> i see you're right you're right you're exactly right when you're right you're right <laughs> um from sony's point of view or in sony's defense there is on consoles at least, no precedent I can think of where you can buy de- any kind of downloadable content on one console and view it on another. If you go to play Call of Duty, you can't buy a skin on Xbox and see that skin on PlayStation. That's a that's a fair point, I will for, say. That's a fair point. For no other game. Yeah. No I think other it, I think... game do you have that option. No, you're 100% right. I can't think of a single one off the top of my head. Um, I mean, I just went from an iPhone to an Android phone, for anyone who doesn't know that already, and there are things I have to buy again, because it's yep. a different platform. Like, that, you're right, that's a precedent that is, does not exist. I think that it is a precedent that is changing, Absolutely. and Sony needs to get on that train quickly before they look like assholes. They do. Right now, they already look like I would expect, in their position, like, I would expect to see Nintendo take that position before I saw Sony yeah. take that position, because Nintendo but, just doesn't know how online works usually. No, but they're they're doing it right. But yeah, they're in the forefront of this, yeah. and I think just Sony's just gotta they've gotta realize things are changing. You gotta change like when PlayStation Four launched, they said this is a box for the gamers about the gamers and what the gamers want. And they've gotta change if they want to keep with yeah. what the gamers want. This isn't in the show notes, but I, I just just remember this right now. Phil Spencer was talking about this, and he basically said you're gonna come across decisions that you're uncertain of what's the right path to take what do we do here and basically says the the right mentality is to just err on the side of what's going to benefit the customer yeah like as a gamer what would i prefer i think that's a good mentality but again like to be fair he has to make that decision because of his position right now in the industry so i but i think it's a good mentality to have and it's it's kind of take the humble path basically you're going to make money off the consoles you're going to make money off the games um, I mean, microtransactions are a thing nowadays. You'll make money off that kind of stuff. You don't have to try to, you know, get a dollar every single chance that you can because it's going to deter people eventually. Yep. So. Holden, that was a great discussion we just had. Everybody <laughs> come back next week for another discussion. Goodbye. I'm just kidding. Wait, no, we're still here. <laughs> so that that was all about Fortnite and our uh, – do you have anything else you want to add about Fortnite? No, I think we said it all. So, Holden, you obviously didn't play Fortnite this week. No, for playtime. No. For oh, playtime, I, mean, I played one match. Tell us about what you did play. I played one match of Fortnite, and I'm like, this is it for me, and I stopped. Nice, but I'll tell you the things good. I actually dedicated time to. What did so, you actually play? So I played a lot. I think I had a lot of. Um, I'm going to play things from developers I liked at E3. It was kind of oh what yeah, it was. I saw you had a Bethesda like jizz explosion. Yeah, so I played Fallout Four and Skyrim. Because, A, because I'm just excited to play Fallout um, 76. We'll get to that. And I'm like, well, I can just play Fallout 4, and it's more or less going to feel like Fallout still. So I'll just play that to kind of hold me over. <laughs> Will the, the previous Fallout games still feel like Fallout? I don't know. <laughs> it's changed so much since the Zero games that came out since. <laughs> and then I just wanted to play Skyrim because I I like Skyrim. I'm not as... I like Fallout 4 more, I would say. But just wanted to get in that world and just play a bethesda game because i'm excited about what they're doing and on the same note i'm like you know cyberpunk 2077 looks insanely awesome so you played cyberpunk so i played cyberpunk <laughs> i played the board game um no i played the witcher 3 nice uh again i've never been a big fan no but the when very i go first back episode to play of the show we ever did you i didn't always like every time yeah and i tried it multiple times i always resumed from where i left off 
This time okay. I deleted my save file. I'm starting from the beginning and I'm I just wanted to okay, like what does a cyber what does a um a CD Project Red game look like? Okay. Like what can I look forward to in in Cyberpunk based on what I can see in The Witcher? So I'm gonna try it. I'm I doubt I'll honestly get that far into it again because there's so much that I have to play. Um namely Deus Ex. I have to play that. Yep. This week. <laughs> so I have to do that. But that might be hard because a new game came out today that I'm very excited about. Nope. Put it nope. away. Put it away. No, I can't. <laughs> Luminous Remastered came out on Switch. I'll talk about the game in a second. Okay. I, I want to share a story about how I really hate Nintendo right now. Tell me a story about a lovely lady. I pre-purchased this game because I wanted to play it, have it downloaded, and just play it the second it became available. Okay. It's great Nintendo's doing that now. What time, Chad, would you expect a pre-purchase game to become available? Midnight. Midnight. Absolutely. That's, the, that's exactly what I thought. Okay. How does noon sound to you? Oh, that sounds bad. It's really bad. Yeah. So I am just I'm playing The Witcher, waiting until midnight, and I'm like, oh, it's like 11.59. I can't wait. And so I just tap on Luminous and says, um, check internet connection to see if you can play this game. And then it says, no, you can't. You can't play this game yet. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I'll just take a few minutes for it to kick in. I spent like 10 minutes just like tapping on it being like, what the fuck? Like, why can't I get this game going? I look online and I look up the rules for pre-purchase and it literally says games are available at midnight for pre-purchase with the certain exception of some games that will be noon. So the Lou Mines is just one of those games. I guess so. But why? why That's so crazy because I pre-purchased a game and I was playing it like 8 a.m. the next morning. Totally you fine. would think, yeah. So I woke up in the morning. I'm like, well, maybe I can play it now. And it just took a while. No, I had to wait until noon. That's insane. That's really That's stupid. stupid. That's dumb. Why did I pre-purchase this game if I got to play it midway through the day? Like, that just seems stupid to me. It does. I guess it's just a dumb game. But, no, it's not a dumb game because I started playing it. It's really, really freaking good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awesome. So, um, Does it use HD Rumble? That's exactly what it's going to talk about. It uses yes, HD it Rumble does. super well. Let me explain what Luminous is for people who don't know what it is yet, though. It's essentially, um, it gets compared to Tetris a lot. It's more like a Dr. Mario, where you have squares that are compromised of four colors, and you have to, like a grid of four colors, and you okay. have to ma- maneuver them and turn them around to line them up on the grid in the bottom, which you have two colors, like red and uh, and blue or something like that. You have to make red squares and blue squares or larger you know, shapes as well if you can line them up that way. So you're just kind of combining the colors to remove them essentially. But it's all set to dance music. And there's a line that moves across your grid to the beat of the music. So eight beats and then it starts over at the beginning again. And just kind of the line just passes through. The squares only go away once the line passes it. So it's kind of all synced up to the beat of the music. But some songs might have a slower tempo, which means that line moves slower. So it might take a lot longer for some of those squares to disappear. So it's kind of... They might start to ramp up the speed a lot. So you're having bigger stacks forming. And just like Tetris, when it gets to the top, that's it, you're done. Yep. And you get to the point where you're like, oh man, this is going to be really tough, tough to manage. And then they slow the beat down a lot. And it immediately becomes super challenging because... It might take longer than it's ever taken before to remove those squares, and you needed it gone immediately, and it's not gone anymore. It, it's just, it's really fun. It's really good. I forget how challenging it is. But there's HD Rumble, and it's so good. It's so good. It, I think it might be my favorite edition of HD Rumble yet. Basically, it yeah. rumbles to the beat of the music and the rhythm of the music. So that the HD Rumble is constantly going. I don't know how it's not draining the battery of my Switch super fast, but it's not. And you really get into the game and more immersed in the game as a result of it. But they beefed it up even more than that. First of all, it's it's dynamic. So like if there's a harder hitting kick drum, you'll feel it yeah. than if there's a, you know a softer um, um, sound as well. But you can link up multiple controllers and not use them, and just put them in your pocket or something like that. And they'll also or up your butt. <laughs> I mean, if you wanted to, <laughs> or and... in your lap. And uh, it will that will also go to the beat of the music just the same. So I'm reading people uh, reading things on, like Reddit for people saying that they put them like on their neck and in their pocket and like just underneath their legs to kind of like really feel the music as they're playing. And like that sounds awesome. 
It works so well. It's the best edition of HD Rumble only if you're wearing headphones because the Joy-Con HD Rumble is super loud. I was going to say, like, is it obnoxious like it was in Celeste where it's basically so, rattles yeah, the whole thing like a So, yeah, they can get pretty loud, but if you have headphones, you don't hear it at all. So it's fine, but when yeah. you have your headphones off, you definitely have to turn the music up to compensate for the loud HD rumble. But it's really, it's a really awesome feature. Side note. Yeah. Did you, like the rest of all of the little boys who played video games as kids, whenever you got into, like, a point in a video game and you had the controller vibrating of course you let it like it during a cutscene lay in your lap right because you're a disgusting <laughs> young child yeah absolutely disgusting and children. also as a as an adult you did that too right <laughs> and i'm pretty sure i've done that this week as well <laughs> well there was this moments where like it'd be hd rumble guys hd rumble guys it's a great feature no whenever it's like a really long vibration it's like well, i'm not gonna hold the controller for this cutscene right anyway Sorry, We're gross. We're my, my Siri on my HomePod kicked in, and I was like, what are you talking about? And then she got HD Rumble. She loves like, HD Rumble as well. She loves it. She loves it. Um, what else did so you play, great. Holden? Well, we played one thing in common this week. Oh, what did we play? Let's, let's we go play there. together? Uh, we both played the Captain Toad demo. We did. Captain Toad for Swatch. Have you played it at all before, or is this no. your first time? Okay. This is my so first time. I had actually levels. never even seen screenshots or gameplay of this. Oh, okay. So you were probably in first surprise. But I knew that people liked it. And that's all I knew about it. I liked it. I have played more than the demo, however. So I know the demo is very simplistic compared to what you get to play later on. Um, I liked it, though. I thought that I was... Did. A, I enjoyed it. It was fun. Yeah. It's um, it's Mario without jumping, and you can move the level around to see it from different perspectives. Yep. There, it's pretty much are, what it is. It's it's a, a puzzle. And it's you know, a puzzle, yeah. About puzzles, but I still enjoyed it. I still had fun with it, and I liked the boss mechanics where it's like you're fighting a big boss, but it's also like you're moving around these levels and collecting shit. And mm-hmm. I had fun with it, and it's a, it's a good quote, game. budget title. It's a $40 game on mm-hmm. Switch. I might pick it up. I'm definitely picking it up. This is what I'm looking up, forward like to. July 13th or something? 13th, you were correct, yeah. Um, looking forward to it. I, I, I want to get it. It's only three levels, but if you're curious, it basically tells you enough about what the game is that – yeah. You'll know if you're going to like it or not. But I really And there will it. be new levels based on Mario Odyssey in the Switch version. Yes. Quick note, too. Do you know who made the game? Um, hold Nintendo, on. Nintendo, Jeff Goldblum. But... <laughs> yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Nintendo made it. But the team within Nintendo is the same team that made Super Mario 3D World. So it's the oh, team great. that made a mainline Mario game made this as a spinoff, which is kind of cool. Two teasers. So hot. how often do you see spinoff games made by the people who made the original game? Not I'm going to guess seven times. I in think history. you're right. Seven yep. times in history. Mm-hmm. 100% correct. Nice. Cool. Holden, thank you for transitioning so well from yours to mine with a shared experience. No problem. Because we I also, during place. Playtime with Chad this week, I also played the Captain Toad demo. I bought Mario Tennis Aces. I pre-purchased it, and I had a grand old time the morning of with my pre-purchase. And it was wonderful. <laughs> I had no noon requirement. Lucky you. Mario Tennis Aces, let me tell you a little bit about my first impressions first of all, with it. I didn't think you were buying this game. I was very surprised to see this on the list. Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. Okay. All right. This is like, I, I kind of equate this to when I bought Mario Strikers Charged on Wii. Like, okay. I don't do sports games, but Mario sports games, they're fun. They're real fun. Mm-hmm. And this is a pretty robust one, too, for a Mario sports game. It is. It yeah. is, Holden. Let me tell you, I've spent probably a good six or seven hours with it so far in the last week. Wow. Has it been out a week? No, it's been out less than a week. No, I don't That's know. That's since Friday. Friday? Few yeah. days. Well, you know, I had flights. I had every time I'm on the bus or on my lunch break or you are so most addicted. of the time. I'm playing Mario Tennis Aces. Um, so I, I started with only the single player stuff. Because that's what I was most excited. I was like, oh man, a story player or a story mode with one player content and cool challenges and things like that. Like, oh, destroy all these shits with your tennis skills. And I was like, oh, that sounds fun. Did you beat it already? That story mode is so fucking frustrating. Oh, is it so really? frustrating. First of all, I just resigned to saying, all right, I'm not good at this game. I get it. I'm not good at Mario <laughs> Tennis Aces. I finally have made it to the beginning of World 4, and I believe there's five worlds. But these levels are so hard, many of them are, like, stupid impossible. And I was just like, yeah, this is so fucking frustrating. I'd try the same level, like, 
20 times. I is finally there like get a mechanic like... that you're not catching on to and that's why it seems impossible? Well, that's what I thought. And then finally today, I was like, you know what? I fucking, first of all, you're only Mario. And, but I was like, I'm going to give up. I'm going to switch over to like just regular old tournament mode, playing tennis against the computer. And damn, I'm good as hell at this game. <laughs> against I the computer. I, well, the single player's computer as well. Mm-hmm. But like I beat Mushroom Cup, Flower Cup, and Star Cup in the tournament mode, didn't get a single point scored against me. Like, every that's, single point scored in all of those tournaments was all me. That's a big difference between single player I know, campaign. right? Turns out I'm good as shit. I don't know it's because I was, like, beaten into submission during the first player that, like, I made myself get good somehow mm-hmm. against impossible odds, and now I'm great at it. I don't know. I'll have to battle real people to find out. But I'm having a lot more fun in the single player mode. First of all, getting to play as anyone in the sing- er, in the sorry in the regular old tennis mode. Mm-hmm. In the single player adventure mode, you have to play as Mario. They have these stupid RPG mechanics. They're like, oh, with every match that you do, even if you lose, you get experience, and then that gives you extra agility or extra defense or whatever the goddamn. But. I literally see zero difference between I was level one and now I'm level twenty nine, and I I see zero difference in all of the levels I've gained. Maybe you were just already so good at the game, there's just no room for improvement. I was, was just... so bad, and then I reached level twenty nine, and it all just clicked. <laughs> but I think what I've decided to do, th- since there's almost nothing in the game that's locked behind, like you can't, you don't have to unlock characters or anything like that through adventure mode. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've unlocked a couple of stages, but who the fuck cares? Yeah. I think I'm going to have a lot more fun with it in the regular old tennis modes, and I'm going to play a lot more online. But regardless, it's got me addicted. Even when I was frustrated with the single-player mode, I was playing it nonstop. When I played the online tournament, I really liked it a lot. I I don't know why I haven't gotten it yet, but I think it's just other things I have to play right now. But I really liked it. I mean, It's a much deeper game than other Mario games have been. There's a lot of different options in how you can approach situations. There's kind of always a way to do something. Yep. It's, it's it's pretty it's a it's a good game um have you played any online yet i've not okay no. i found when i was playing online that it is either good burp thank you burping you're welcome burping there you go <laughs> i got it so the i would fight i would fight someone i would have a match against someone and like crush them I'm like oh man i'm awesome at this i'm so good like how am i like at the top of my game of mario tennis already and then someone else would play me and i can't get a point against them they're like some for some reason like their tennis ball is like jumping all over the place and i can't get it not really but they're just so good i can never get to the ball in time and i just feel so down on my luck it was always either one of those just extremes. dichotomies it was never yeah one of those extremes it was never uh Never ending in the middle. I never had like a match against someone where it was a good match and wow, like I didn't know who was going to come out of the top. We were pretty equally matched. It was always I trounced them, they trounced me. So I'm curious what your experience is because this yeah. was during the beta, gotcha. which they were working things out. I will uh, update everyone probably not next week because I have to play to sex man kind of varded, <laughs> but maybe the week after that. Um. I also played this week Detroit Become Human. My roommate and I are playing this together, Oh. and we're about six sweet. hours in, and let me tell you, I'm invested as fuck in this story. Is, is it that good? It is. It, so far, it is really great. Now, we're I've six heard... hours in. This is You have three characters. Yeah. You're, it's, it's basically just choice-based game. Mm-hmm. You can choose to explore things. If you learn things about your environment, that might teach you things about whatever task you have upcoming. You can unlock different conversations. Um, so it's, it's very much a walking simulator with occasional button presses to learn things or explore. But it's the a quantum story dream they're game. telling, yeah, it's a quantum dream game, much more like heavy rain than, than beyond two souls and how it plays. Okay. Although there's not a lot of really frustrating quick time events like there was in heavy rain, like the segment with the car. Did you, no, you didn't play heavy rain. Just forget nope. it. I want to, but I have, if you, it. if you're familiar with heavy rain, anyone who's listening, like the, the car segment where you're driving and you have to do the steering wheel and all that, like. There's very, very, very little of that in what I've played so far of Detroit Become Human. But what I love about it so far is knowing that any of these characters could die at any moment. That makes me so much more invested in how we play it. Because especially when I'm not in control of the... Exactly. When I'm not in control of the controller, when my roommate's playing that chapter, 
I'm like on the edge of my seat and I was like, uh, right, right, hit right, hit right, uh, jump, jump over that, uh, and then we're just like, and then she's like, oh god, I'm so bad, oh god, oh wait, did we release the bear? Oh crap, thank god we released the bear so that this happened and this, and I was like, oh, like, <laughs> and then we get to the end of it and they show you, this is the path you took, these are the I 30 other that things that could have happened in this chapter that didn't, and you're like, what? This chapter could have been That's twice really as long cool as it idea. was for you right now? It's a really yeah. good idea for people who want to go back and play it again and kind of know what they could try out and experiment with. Yeah. That's a really clever idea. I'm I'm so freaking pumped for the to figure out what the end of the story is, and I hate that I have to play Deus Ex Mankind Departed. Just kidding. I, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy that game a lot. So I'm, I'm into it. I'm assuming that by next week, regardless of my Mankind Divided tasks that I have to do, I'll probably have beat this game. So I'll, mm-hmm. I can give you, like, my, my final opinions on it. Uh, but, yeah, I'm invested in all three characters. Having a blast with it. Cool, I do cool, recommend cool. playing it with a friend, too. Because it's it's just fun to, like, make decisions together and be like, oh, you made that decision last chapter, which means now I have to deal with the consequences in this one. Mm-hmm. It's good. But I have one more thing that I played. Ooh, one more thing. And this is hopefully the start of an okay, ongoing Steve Jobs. segment. Yeah, that's right. One more thing. Ooh, all right, all right, all right. That's Steve Jobs right there. Yes, he Whoa, said all right, all right, all right. One more thing. All right. Um, <laughs> hopefully this is the start of a new segment that we might have recurring occasionally. If you guys follow us on Twitter, about two months ago, you might have seen uh, we retweeted a game called Gleam of Fire, an indie game on iOS from Snow Games. And we retweeted saying, hey, this game looks cool. You might see this come up on an episode of our podcast in the future when it comes out. Well, that developer, Snow Games, full disclosure, reached out to us and said, hey, here's a code for my new game. It's out. Uh, I'd love to get your opinions on it, blah, blah, whatever. So, yeah, I played Gleam of Fire. It is a side-scrolling platformer on iOS. Uh, Maybe Android? I think it's on Android, but it's definitely on iOS. And let me tell you two things about this game. One, it is very bad at telling you why this game is so great. Two. Okay, that's a weird thing to say. Yeah, I'll expand on that in a second. Yeah, I want to expand on that for sure. Two, I'm having a really good time with this game as well. I had a whole week full of good times with games. So Gleam of Fire, it's a, it's a really cool look. If you look at the art style from any like trailers or screenshots from it on Snow Games Twitter, or even on like the App Store or something like that, it has this kind of like limbo type uh, art style where all of the characters and enemies and things like that are just silhouettes. And then the background is different colors with textures and things like that. And the main character that you play as is like basically a Batman clone. He looks exactly like Batman. But you're jumping through these levels, but the enemies... It is iOS. Is iOS only? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. The enemies in this game are very... They're very much a... Like they have one single track or one particular task... Like, uh, the rat. The rat will walk back and forth, and it will not stop for anything. It won't chase you. It won't attack you. It'll just walk back and forth. There are hornets that just go up and down. There are guys who shoot arrows, and they will shoot arrows across the screen, but only in one direction, so you can get behind them and kill them. And what I found, like, at first, I was like, man, all of these enemies, like, they're just so dumb. There's no challenge to them. I'm fighting them. But then, as you get them all together and in certain different environments, it kind of becomes a puzzle of, all right... While that guy's shooting arrows, and then the rat is moving here, how can I jump up and maybe shoot an arrow past them or get behind the arrow guy to kill him so that makes getting the other guys done? Um, so it's, it's kind of a platformer, kind of a puzzle thing in how all of these enemy encounters work. There are some very basic elements. You're trying to just basically get to the end of the level. You're lighting torches along the way. A part of what I think this game does itself a disservice with is the whole time as you kill things, you're getting these little tokens. And as you light torches, you're getting stars at the end of the levels for like three stars. If you found all the torches two if you found two of them, things like that, but it never tells you what the fuck you're doing with these things. So I get like halfway through the first world. And I'm like, why do I have all of these things I'm collecting? And then I find on the main menu screen, as you're choosing your level, which you don't see normally, if you like beat the level, it just takes you to the next one. You don't actually see the menu screen. There's an upgrades tab, and you can get extra life. You can upgrade your sword or your freeze power or your bow and things like that. And it's like, oh, that's what all this shit is for. So I'm having a lot of fun with this. 
there's a really cool boss battle in the end of the first world with like this flaming scarecrow guy with these knives and swords and shit like that. It's kind of a cool retro look. I'm enjoying the heck out of it. It's like three ninety nine on the app store. Is That's it worth that bad. money? Yeah, I think it's it's totally worth it for what you get for it. There are three worlds. I'm at the end of the first one. I've put a lot of time. Well, before I figured out the difficulty curve and upgrading, I definitely put a lot more time into it frustratedly. But yeah, it's great. Go into it knowing that there's going to be some communication issues. They're not going to tell you about upgrades. Uh, they're not going to necessarily tell you how to navigate some of the things. Like, I think on a sign somewhere in the first level, they might have told me how to drop down from platforms, which is by swiping down on the screen. But uh, either I had forgotten it or I never ran into that sign. And then I was like you... stuck in the level three. Then I was like, how do I get down from here? I'm, I don't know where to go. And then I just accidentally found it out. Do you get a sense it's kind of like, and not that every game should be compared to Dark Souls, but like Dark Souls, they intentionally don't tell you those things for you to experiment no. and try things out. Do you think it's a communication thing? I think it's a, so so Snow Games, the uh, the guy who made this game, and it's one person who made this game. That's always I think so it's impressive. probably, it's, yeah, it's incredibly impressive. impressive that it exists, but I think it is probably more of like a, uh, just learning curve, like yeah. trial and it, like this is maybe his first game, or I don't, mm-hmm. I actually don't know the history behind what he does, but probably just something that oh knowing people are having issues with communication maybe having a part like mm-hmm. how to play or controls in the menu or something like that so if, if i do miss a sign or something like that somewhere i can do that well being a mobile game though that can be updated pretty quickly i mean yeah. the coding might not be quick but the process of submitting the update and getting it to the store yeah so, so that can be fixed for with the qualifier of a mobile game yeah it's I, I haven't played a lot of mobile games, but I'd say it's worth downloading if you want to give it a shot. Mm-hmm. It's not a break the bank kind of thing at four bucks. Um, but there's no micro microtransactions either. It's four dollars. No, exactly. Yeah, it's four bucks. See, that's a good thing too. It's like uh, for me, honestly, like I would support the game on that alone. I haven't played the game to be clear. I would support the game on that alone because I hate these mobile games that are free, but to enjoy it, you have to spend more money on stupid bullshit. I like a game. I pay for it once. It's mine. I have the yep. game. I play the game. So good for him for doing that. That was a bold move nowadays. One last thing I want to add. Shout out to the sound design. The sound design in this game. (laughs) They have some cool music, but mostly when you hit enemies, Mm -hmm. the combination of not only like the sounds that it makes, they feel like really visceral and you feel powerful while doing it, but also the screen kind of shakes as you hit your enemies with your sword and things like that and you shoot your arrow as like time slows down. Like that stuff is little tiny subtle things that make the game feel a lot better mm-hmm. than uh, like your run in the mill yeah. mobile games. So overall, I'd recommend it. If you're looking Sweet. for some fun on on iOS and you're a mobile gamer and you like a casual platformer, check it out. And by casual I mean it it gets difficult. Very very cool, very cool. Oh man, I just feel like I talked for 100. For 100, yep. You talked for 100. Take over some talking from me by opening up our quest log and telling the whole fucking world about what the shit is going on in the internet. Oh, we got some shit to talk about. Oh, shit talking with Holden DePardo. (laughs) So, earlier uh, we talked about the PlayStation head. Well, we're going to talk about the new PlayStation head for a second. His name is to be said in a second while I pull up Instapaper and pull up this article. (laughs) John Codera. And he had something interesting to say about portable gaming that I thought was worth mentioning. He said, and I quote, In my opinion, rather than separating portable gaming from consoles, it's necessary to continue thinking of it, portable gaming, as one method to deliver more gaming experiences and exploring what our customers want from portable. We want to think about many options. This has led people to think that maybe Sony actually is thinking about making another portable system. That would be interesting. You know what else would be cool? Mm Mm-hmm. If they made the Switch their portable system, <laughs> bring the remote play app to Switch. That put would their be games dope. On Switch. I would love that actually. <laughs> um, I just like my Switch. Shut up. Get out of here. You yeah, I think that it'd be harder for Sony to succeed in the portable area if it's not a hybrid. But then, if they have a hybrid, why are they making a home console? So I'd be very interested to see how they go through with it. But I'd welcome to see what they would do. I wouldn't yeah. be opposed to seeing it. I liked yeah. the Vita. I like the Vita a lot. It was a great system. They make good hardware. So yeah, we'll see. Totes, most deaf. Totes. 
Here's a one that uh, I found interesting. Microsoft is backtracking on what they originally announced for Scorpio, and they are saying that they are no longer planning VR or mixed reality support for Xbox. Yes. They're specifically saying that Xbox is a flat screen TV experience, and PC is a virtual reality mixed reality experience. Yep. Mostly because PC, they mentioned that like PC can be updated quicker. It is always like the cutting edge, and that's where the best experiences are going to be as they get updated. Mm-hmm. But I just found that interesting because I, I think even on the box, the retail box for Xbox One X and the Project Scorpio edition, it says support for mixed reality on there. Interesting. Do you think that it is because – they're saying this now because they don't have plans for Xbox One S and One X to support virtual reality, but the mm. next generation will? Or do you think – I hope so because I think that – that's a big advantage to to being on a Sony platform is the option of having virtual reality. Yeah, I don't know. It's good. It works well. Yeah. Um, here's one that I'm very excited about. We don't actually talk about this kind of stuff on the podcast, but I am so excited about this. You dork. Uh, so there's going to be a Bluetooth Rubik's cube, and I think it looks like the coolest thing ever. Um, I'm a Rubik's cube hobbyist. I collect them. I have many different types of them. I have a Rubik's cube tattoo. I like an Rubik's impossible cubes Rubik's a lot. cube tattoo on your forearm. Yes, I have an impossible. It's not the solution or the configuration is not solvable. Um, good trivia fact. Good, good job for remembering that, Chad. Yeah, you really and that are, was not intentional. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. It was not intentional, um, but I'm rolling with it. So the idea with this Bluetooth Rubik's cube is two things. One is that it's going to help you. It's going to help you teach you how to use a Rubik's cube. There'll be a mobile app. That'll connect to it via Bluetooth, and it will literally show you, hey, you should make this move next, or to get this part of the solution, here's the algorithm to get to that point, and it teaches you how to solve it. But for people like me, who, I mean, I've been doing them now for 12 years or something like that, I know how to solve a Rubik's Cube, but it will still study what I'm doing and tell me how fast I'm solving it, how many turns per second, tips on how I could solve it faster and showing me some more advanced algorithms that I might not know of. But I can also compete with people online and uh, kind of solve against them. I think that's such a cool that's idea. Insane. It's very cool. There are two types of cubes. <clears throat> there is a standard cube and there's like a speed cube. The speed cube allows you to um, t- track more turns per second. So like once you get to a higher level of, Ruby- of solving Rubik's Cubes, you don't necessarily do two things at once, but you can kind of set up turns to kind of snap them together really quickly so you could do multiple turns a second if you're really fast like there are people who can solve a rubik's cube in five seconds i can't do that but they're definitely oh, doing I've more than one turn videos. per second so there's i would probably get that one myself to some i'd want the best one possible because i have a whole collection and it's important to me i want good rubik's cubes yeah but here's my here's my concern is that the original Rubik's Cube, the standard Rubik's Cube, like the Rubik's Cube original branded one is the worst cube you can buy because it is terrible to turn. It It's really slow. You have to buy speed cubes if you want to get something that can turn fast and well. If this tracks my turns per second and how fast I'm solving the cube and all that, but it's not the best cube that I can use, it kind of is pointless to me. How useful is it? Exactly, but I still love the idea, and I want to talk about it on here because it's exciting to me. I know it's not gaming, but it is gaming. I guess it's technically you yeah, could say it's, it's augmented like Amish reality gaming. gaming it's like Amish sense. gaming meets computers. Amish gaming, yeah, Amish gaming from the 1970s. The connected wooden doll. <laughs> <laughs> connected Bluetooth stick and ball. <laughs> Bluetooth, push a hoop down the street with a stick. <laughs> All right. That are real gaming stuff. None of that nerdy Rubik's Cube bullshit. Oh, yeah. None of that nerdy PlayStation Now streaming. Ooh. So, apparently, there are a few games on the PlayStation Now streaming service that someone has found that gives you the option in the options menu to download them. Now, the, the option doesn't actually work, but it does say download game, which leads us to believe that in the future, similar to how Xbox Game Pass works, you might be able to actually download PlayStation Now games. Which would be definitely a um, uh, benefit to that service, since some uh, what's been criticized about it, mostly at launch, was the, how the latency is an issue. This mm-hmm. would definitely solve that. Now, there has been a story that has been followed up. That was the follow-up of this that I forgot 
all of the information decided on, so you can pretend I'm lying to if you want. But there is somebody who has inside information who says that, yes, indeed, it is coming to PlayStation now. They are planning a September launch for it, and it will only be for PlayStation 4 games. The download feature will be. I welcome it. I doubt it. I'm just kidding. I don't Damn. doubt it. That's just something that happened. Um, yeah, I would <laughs> I would welcome that. Would it entice me to play this the or use the service? Probably not. I mostly just want my PlayStation 3 digital games that I've already paid for available. Mm-hmm. But... I love that it's an option out there. Yeah. Um, here's a cool kind of leftover from E3. There's going to be no online for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, the makers of Bloodborne and Dark Souls. Which is interesting because online was a big part of those two games. But they want this to be a single player only experience. Nice. They also said it's going to be more difficult. Nice. <laughs> so I'm on, I'm on board for the difficult aspect of it, but I mean I would bring someone into Dark Souls or Bloodborne if I thought it was too hard and I needed someone to help me out with it. So it's interesting that it's harder and you get no option for help. Good. Fucking you suck great. it up, beat that monster. Get good. Get good. That's what the kids say. <laughs> All right, a few more shorter stories, then we're going to move on to the big Boom. boys. Mario Kart gets Labo support today. You may have noticed on your Switch there's a new update for Mario Kart. If you have the Nintendo Labo, like motorcycle thing you can actually put your joy con in it now and use it in mario kart to steer so it's kind of like the cardboard shell version of the wii steering wheel and uh there's apparently more games to come as well they should have announced this when they first showed off labo yeah i think that would have helped the sales yeah if you thought hey cool you can play a dumb kart riding game in labo or at some point play mario kart with this which one would make you more excited? Clearly Mario Kart. So I'm just Clearly. surprised they didn't mention that. Because they've obviously been working on this since before they announced Labo. Like, why? I don't know. It's strange to me. But, okay. I don't know. How hard do you... Because I mean, they already had motion control with the Joy-Con. How hard do you think it would have been to patch it in after they saw his Joy... Or Labo didn't really pan out. Okay, that's that's fair, but... But... A good update, though, is an update to the eShop. Nintendo Ooh, eShop. Tell me about it. So they basically just add a few more options. So like when you look at the best sellers, you can see what was like the all games list, but also just downloadable games. So you can kind of see just like the more indie experiences or smaller experiences to check out there. Um, they changed uh, the name deals to great deals. Great deals. Great deals. Um, but it's just kind of, it's not a huge update. It's just kind of a few more options in there. Um, I think they need to do a lot more with the eShop, but it, they're, they're changing things. They're looking at it. They're making small improvements. So I welcome it, but I want better ways to find content by like genre and all of that. Right now, you have to yeah. go to like, a search menu and then choose your genre. I want to see like a categories option. Yeah. That's what I really want right now. Like the game categories you used to play in the swimming pool as a kid? N- never heard of it. You didn't? One person gets on one side of the pool, everyone else is on the other. And then the game is categories, and the person on one side says, all right, everyone choose your favorite, ice cream. And then they shout out flavors of ice cream until it matches yours, and then you have to race to the other side of the pool. Whoever wins gets to be the category chooser. That's how you talk about Amish gaming on a... I don't know. What the fuck am I talking about? Just go. Because Amish people just had swimming cut pools. Cut me off. Cut me off. Yeah, they had swimming pools. It's called ponds. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, you have a pool in your backyard? How cool. Yeah, it's filled with mud and dirt water and fish. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You take this one. You go for it. What is it? Deep down trademark extended again. There you go. I was hoping we'd fucking see that at E3. Well, god damn it, Capcom. I guess you're still working on it, question mark? They're not going to renew it if they're not working on it. Or they just love the name Deep Down. Yeah, Deep Down. Anyway, so yeah. Let's move on to uh, game potatoes for G potatoes for the week. Uh, we have three of them. One of one of which we already talked about, which was Fortnite and Sony. Fortnite, and the other two are both Nintendo Switch related. Ooh, I know we're going to do disagree in the first one because we disagreed in the last time this was mentioned. But Capcom wants to bring more cloud based games to the Switch. Mm. I hate this idea so much because it is just the antithesis of what Switch is about. Play your games anywhere, and this is. Play your games anywhere where you have an internet connection. I don't Did like. Did you it. watch the video of somebody playing using a hotspot on their phone? I don't. But I, hotspot I drains your phone's battery. 
it drains your battery so fast. Yeah, but your Switch is only going to last three hours anyway. But I want my phone to last more than my Switch throughout the day. Why? Because I need to Don't use my phone Don't you carry around a Mophie juice pack with you everywhere? No. And also a charger? And also... No. Well, you should, because that's what the most of America does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is a good idea, and it really bugs me. It's a I, cheap, I lazy way to get your games on the Switch. I want to see more information on how Resident Evil Seven is doing. Like, is it successful? good enough that they're it, they're wanting to move I, I more games so. over? Well enough, they're wanting to move more games over. I don't like this. You do. I think it's a game potato. You don't. But I, I think it's it in a here, cool so. idea. I'm glad they're experimenting with it. I'd, Experiment I'd, somewhere I don't else. Know. Don't don't do it on Switch. <laughs> I want to because if I have a game oh, on my Switch and I'm like I'm on racist. a plane and I'm like oh I want to play this oh but I can't because I'm on a s- s- plane and Capcom's cheap bastards and they don't actually make their games for Switch they just make a cloud service instead because making cloud service is easy and porting games is hard. Hold on, let's be clear. You would never buy Resident Evil Seven on your Switch. Not that game, but there are maybe Told other you. Capcom games. Told you. Nope, I beat you. <laughs> the other one i think this is legitimately stupid um nintendo has a uh, a special edition of the switch that they're making or the new color scheme and everything and it's a nintendo labo edition of the switch wait that's real that's real i think it's the stupidest thing i've ever seen do they have pictures of it i'm looking yeah. at this thing and i don't see pictures there's pictures in instant paper uh it looks really stupid and i think the reason i don't like this is that like the Mario bundles or something they did, they just put like red Joy Cons in there. They're actually making this Switch look like it was made oh out of cardboard. God. Yeah, it's it's all that cardboard brown color. It's not really cardboard; it's still plastic, but yeah. it looks like they changed the color scheme of it. It's like the the very first like different color Switch is for Labo. That's just very strange to me. Why wouldn't you do it for a game people care about? I don't like that. Yeah, but also like, oh boy, I can't wait to get ugly brown joy cons <laughs> and an ugly brown dock and an ugly brown butt it also says nintendo labo on the back of the switch it just looks so stupid it does like to this second right now i would if, so- if someone said oh this is an april fool's joke that's just really late i'd be oh that makes sense but no this all is right. really happening all right so those are our game potatoes for the week Hey, let's get into some real quests. Let's get some real and stuff. And by that, I mean, like, we talked a lot about fetch quests that I did not expect us to talk about. Yeah, I didn't expect that either, actually. Here's one that I love. And by love, I mean, like, well, you fucking get it, Bethesda. Bethesda is suing Warner Bros. Yeah. Over their mobile game. So, uh, Bethesda's game, Fallout Shelter, happens to look incredibly similar to Warner Bros. new Westworld game. Not even that apparently use some of the same code it it uses a lot of the same code how do they know because it has the same bugs that fallout shelter did <laughs> when fallout shelter first launched um but that's a technically I, they outsourced to another developer to make mm-hmm. fallout shelter and that same developer went to warner bros to make uh westworld and it looks like that they just took all of the fallout code and skin a lot of the animations are exactly the same of the characters uh the art style is exactly the same so yeah they're going to court with warner bros and i suggest if you want that westworld game you download it as quickly as possible because i have a feeling that's not going to be available much longer yeah that you get that now if you want it but i think it looks stupid so i'm not gonna get it anyway <laughs> did you like fallout shelter i downloaded it on switch uh and it's one of the first games i deleted on switch very good yeah um, not a bad game, just not for me. Like, it's it's a mobile yeah. game, you know what I mean? It's, I don't know, um, not for me. Not that mobile games are bad, but you know what I mean. I mean, um, Luminous. So, I think this is awesome news here. PS4 Classics are now available. So yeah! They're, they're taking kind of the big, instead of taking the kind of the big games of the PS4 era and making them $20. And there's some good options. Yeah, this is something they've done with previous generations as well. I'm glad to finally see it come to PS4. Mm-hmm. The games differ from territory to territory, but there are some really great ones on it, like Bloodborne, Uncharted 4, uh, Project Cars, Mastered. Project Cars, uh, soon to come Crew 2, Crew Harder, and Crew Harder, god <laughs> damn it, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, Last of Us Doom Remastered's on there. On there. Yes, hey, Doom guys, is on I there. bought Doom. We're going to yeah. play Doom, you guys, sometime. 
Oh, oh man, do. I'm gonna. I might make that a barf because I want you to play that game so well, bad. Now that you have it, now you're gonna make me hate it because I have to play it for, on purpose. <laughs> That's a good point. It's not gonna be barf. We just play it in your own time, which you'll totally get to. Just like Samus returns. Whatever we pick next month, we're gonna be down a week, so we have to make sure it's short. Yes, and that's I, I'd okay, say we short. do uh, Skyrim. Well, your audio is breaking up, so I didn't hear any of what you suggested, so I'll move on to the next story. <laughs> GameStop <laughs> is looking for a buyout. Oh, good, I heard you laugh. You're back. GameStop is apparently going under, as the world foretold about 10 years ago, and it is looking for someone to buy it. And it has led to a lot of great memes of people saying, how much would you pay for GameStop? And they're like, well, I'll pay you four ninety nine, <laughs> or I'll give you $12 store credit. <laughs> um, it, actually, we didn't mention this either, but uh, they're also, and write this in the list, they're also going to sell comic books. They are. Is, and if you There's another stores. thing they're going to do. Yeah. I yep. GameStop is done with. I think stores like Best Buy and Target will be where you buy your hardware and that kind of stuff because GameStop's and just done. Honestly, Amazon, it's all online now. I know, but if people want to go to a store, they'll go to a, a bigger box store like that. Or yeah, or the Walmart. Or the Walmart. But uh, yeah, they're they dropped uh, from the revenue. They dropped thirty two percent from last year. They went from twelve Ooh, billion really? to nine billion, roughly speaking. That's a big drop for one year. Like, that's not good. That's a bad sign. So. Mm. So, boom. Um, you know what's not a bad sign? Anything what? involving Stranger Things. I think this is weird, but it's not a bad... Well, Stranger Things might be happening. So, the story here is that Netflix is going to be moving towards interactive content. They're starting with Minecraft. Not that Minecraft. They're going with Story Mode from Telltale Games. They're going to basically feature interactive content to pl- watch... Well, interact with on Netflix.com. They're doing it with oh, kids' games. Oh, I read this differently. They're doing it with kids' content already, so they have like a Puss in Boots game or sto- <laughs> like interactive story. Um, Puss. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna have the story mode, uh, Minecraft story mode from Telltale Games, and there's also a rumor that they're gonna have a Stranger Things interactive experience as well, well which Str- does not surprise uh, me. Telltale is already making a Stranger Things game, and that will be the first one on their new engine. On oh, new it is okay. I did not know that. I was gonna. Yeah. I was literally gonna make a prediction. It's probably gonna be made Telltale because that makes sense for them to do. Yeah, I think but they they're announced already that doing last it last week. Okay. So, um, boom. I'm excited for a Telltale Stranger Things, especially since it's gonna be on a new engine. Mm-hmm. I, I don't quite know how that would work on Netflix's. I, I mean, I guess if you're streaming, it's gonna use the directional Netflix buttons. Main, that's yeah. That's that's what they said. That's weird. It's kind of like streaming Resident Evil Seven to your Switch. Because Switch will have Netflix, or it's been rumored. So, and that's when it will become a real console when it finally gets Netflix. In my Shut opinion. up, <laughs> Holden. Did you know that Nintendo's stock dropped just before E three? I don't know anything else about that article. Do you want to add anything before I throw it away? <laughs> <laughs> um, it stock dropped ten percent in two Ooh. days before E three, and no one knows why. There is a few uh, thoughts. Um, Did it go back up? It's been two weeks. I don't know if it's gone back up or not, but I'm not super surprised. Tell you what, I'm tracking it through my stocks app on my yeah. Phone. Go for it. Check I'll it out. I'm gonna know. find more information on on this. Um, one of the things they're saying is that uh, there's talk of the quality of life program that Netflix wanted that uh, um, Nintendo wanted to do apparently got canceled internally, which I'm not surprised. They've been talking about that geez, since before 3ds came out, and it still hasn't happened. So. There's just no way that that's going to happen anyway. So not surprised it got canceled. Um, the other reason they're talking about is that they had announced Super Smash Brothers and Pokemon ahead of E3, and so I guess analysts just had the suspicion that there wasn't going to be much to see oh. at E3 from Nintendo. So I'm going to let you know right now: mm-hmm. the last four weeks of performance on Nintendo stock right now it's at forty dollars and ninety eight cents a share. Yeah, it has dropped. Uh, four weeks ago, it was at fifty one forty four per share. It's dropped twenty oh, percent wow. in the last four weeks, and has been pretty much a steady decline across those. There was a sharp peak just before E three, actually, and then right after E three on the twelfth, it tanked. It's still above where it was before Switch, I believe. So one year ago, yes, it is slightly above, and then two years ago, it is quite a bit above. Yeah. Two years ago at this time, it was at $16.81 a share. Yeah, so still, I think they're still doing fine. I think yeah. that this is what it is. 
That's the stock market. Bro. Switch had an incredible year last year, a really strong year. They had Someone Zelda call it and an Mario. Incredible year. They as had... incredible as Michael Buble. <laughs> they had Zelda and Mario in one year. They can't beat that again. Like those are their two biggest franchises. Well, they do this year also have Zelda and Mario again in Smash Bros. Brawl. Or Smash Bros. Ultimate. <laughs> Brawl. They're bringing back the Wii version. The well, they most were both in Brawl Smash too, so Bros. Your mom. Game. So, but I, I honestly think they're underestimating how well Pokemon and Smash are going to do. Yeah. I think they're going to do great. But I think that it looks bad when you say, oh, Zelda and Mario came out. They don't have a Zelda and Mario this year as well. They're doing terribly. I you know how I know Pokemon's going to do way well? way you think of looking at things. What we didn't that? put this on here, but it like just broke yesterday. Pokemon Go has the largest player base right now than it had than it has had since summer two years ago. Wow. More people are playing Pokemon Go right now because of the Let's Go announcements. And I'm not like surprised. So, yeah, Pokemon Let's Go is going to do very well. Absolutely. I think that people are uh, that are critical of the 20 million Switch units sold this year don't understand how big those games are going to be. Switch will reach that goal. I'm yep. confident in it. Um, speaking of analysts, we Anal. have two kind of predictions of the future, if you will. Let's start with the analyst prediction. Anal. Um, analysts think that all games will be digital by 2022. Liar. I agree. I think PC games are already digital only. You can't buy a physical PC game anymore. You can go but, buy a code at a GameStop. <laughs> that counts. For the next, like, six months, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> But I, it's the issue is that not everywhere has the internet infrastructure that we have in America. Even people in America don't have the internet infrastructure of everyone else in America. It, yeah. It's not there yet. Our internet's not there yet. In Australia, the internet is so much slower than it is here. To download a game like God of War, and God knows how big the, the, the next generation of games are going to be. And quite honestly, use game sales. Like yeah, no, seriously. Use game sales. Everyone's into it. Walmart's doing it. Best Buy's doing it. Amazon's doing it. Use game sales are a huge driver, and you can't do that with digital. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just don't see that happening. It's going to take a while before that occurs. But I do, do think I that... want it to happen. Yes, because no, I've already too. given up on physical media. Absolutely, and so I think I. everyone else should in the world, and everyone should do what I do because that's how the world works. <laughs> but also. <laughs> Yeah, it's not going to happen by 2022. I mean, I think by 2022, you'll see that digital is where most things are sold. That wouldn't surprise me. But there's still going to be a desire for for physical. So that brings us to the uh, CEO of Ubisoft, uh, Yves Guimot. Is it Guimot? Guimot. 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 You have to have Uh, that really, like, pretentious mall. Well, I'm not pretentious, so it I must be really it. nasal. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> we are so tolerant of other cultures on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you how to correctly pronounce his name. Yves <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Gilmol. <laughs> so he has a when prediction. future. <laughs> He has a prediction about the future of game consoles. He thinks that the next generation will be the last traditional generation of consoles before we move on to all streaming devices. Have we not talked about this on the podcast? He's mentioned it a few times. Talked about this? We've talked about this before, but he's mentioned it before. He said this um, before PS4 came out. He said there's going to be two more generations, then it's all streaming. I mentioned him saying this, even though I disagree with him, because he's the head of Ubisoft. He Ubisoft. No, I say Ubisoft. It's I French. say it just to piss you off. It's French. You'll be <laughs> Um, he's he would know. I mean, this guy is one of the biggest people in the industry. He would know. So I feel like yeah. if someone's saying this and it's him, he has a good chance of being right on it. But I still think he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because you who follows only people on Twitter, know a lot more than the CEO of one of the biggest third-party publishers in the world. Again, it goes to internet infrastructure. Not every country will be ready for that, even with 5G networking. It's going to take a while before 5G is everywhere. Do you think? I think so, yeah. That's just always what my mom does. If we ever see a movie and we're like, hey... And my mom's afterwards was like, here's a million dollar question. Did so-and-so actually kill so-and-so? I was like, yeah, obviously. They showed it in the movie. And she just goes, do you think? 
<laughs> like, yes, yes, it did. Yeah, like that's why I just said what I just said. <laughs> um, so we'll see what happens with Yves Gimel. Yves Gimel. We'll see what happens there. I mean, he could be right, but he's probably wrong. So, yeah. <laughs> you are so intolerant of others' opinions. <laughs> Well, my opinion's fact. That's why. Okay. That's what hey, it says. There's one the, more the, on here. It says Death Stranding story details. I don't know what this is, but I'm interested. I'll read the highlighted stuff. Sony has come out a bit more straightforwardly and revealed some official story details. Um, the following story pitch of Death Stranding is provided via PlayStation's listing of the game's new E3 2018 trailer on YouTube. Ooh, Ooh. listen up, boys and girls. Besieged by death's tide at every turn, Sam Bridges must brave a world utterly transformed by the Death Stranding. Carrying the stranded remnants of the future in his hands, Sam embarks on a journey to reunite the shattered world one step at a time. What is the mystery of Death Stranding? What will Sam discover on the road ahead? A genre-defining gameplay experience holds these answers and more. <laughs> Um, I still don't know what it's about. Yeah, nope, me neither. Yeah, but that's the most uh, written information we've ever had about the game before. I, I now know that Death Stranding is a noun. Yes. Transformed by the Death Stranding. What is the mystery of the Death Stranding? Is I don't it, know. I guess it's a person well, or an event. Carrying the stranded remnants of the future in his hands. Could that be a baby? A baby. Could that be a baby? Gaga. Look at me, I'm Lady Gaga. I'm wearing a hat made of meat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a night tonight, y'all. I'm getting a little tired of hearing a genre-defining gameplay experience. What genre? Getting... What genre are we defining? I don't know. We're making a new one. We'll define it. Well, that's the thing is they keep saying it. And it's like, guys, we had this revolutionary thing we're going to show you. We're going to tease this over multiple conferences with vague trailers that don't tell you anything. But it's going to be revolutionary. Just you wait. What happens when they finally show Just this and it could be a big way. letdown? It could be a big letdown. Like, they're kind of being very ballsy about this, a little arrogant, and it's kind of getting annoying, I think. Dude, you know what's not good? Balls. The weirdest part of the human being. Yes, that's relevant to what we were just talking about. <laughs> you said ballsy. <laughs> 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 they're being arrogant. Oh, man. You know what's the worst part of breathing? <laughs> Air. <laughs> Oh, you're being silly, Hold on, I think I'm done with our our quests. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was our last one. <laughs> Good. Moving on to our main quest for today, the reason you're all here, the reason the sun gets up in the morning to blind us all with its juice. <laughs> it is the E3 wrap-up predictions, tallying, who won, big disappointment, big, great discussion of E3. Yes. How would you like to proceed, Holden? So we are going to start off just by kind of going through our predictions that we made, and we're going to basically say if we were right or not. I'll tell you, I was very wrong. Oh, man, I was wrong about so much stuff. Let's take a look. So let's go through our early kind of far-out predictions first. Okay. So Far-out. I'll, I'll start with mine. Um, I was right with uh, Nintendo will dedicate an entire day or more of Treehouse to Smash for Switch. I was right about that. That, that happened. Well... Was an entire day only Smash? They dedicated a whole tournament to it, yeah. But was that everything was the in coast... the treehouse that day? Okay, okay. There are other things. I don't think you know they how did... the word dedicate works. Shut up. The, over the course of the total amount of content they showed was over the course of many days. Was there a day's worth of content spread across yes. three days? I yes. think so. However, an entire day was not dedicated. Fine, I'll uncheck it, but I think I'm right still. <laughs> Woo, I'm a son of a bitch. <laughs> this one I got very wrong, and I'm actually glad I got this wrong. Xbox will continue to boast about backwards compatibility since they won't have much to talk about otherwise. Boy, was <laughs> I wrong that one. Um, Bethesda will have their biggest E3 in the past few years. I would say they did. Yeah, I'd agree with that. They had their biggest E3 in a, in a while. I'll give you a point for that one. Thanks, Chad. You're welcome. You had to be nice since you were brutal to me with the first one. Yep. Um, two more for our early um, predictions. Battle Royale will be one of the new buzzwords and will dominate multiplayer games. I was wrong. Only, yeah. Only uh, Battlefield Five. Yeah. Um, there was and... another like Battle Royale game shown off for 30 half of a second 
in a sizzle reel at PlayStation, but yeah. Yeah, that's it. that doesn't count. In terms of saying that it dominated multiplayer games. Right, It did right, not right, dominate right, right, multiplayer right, right. games. Because I know what dominate means, but I don't know what dedicated means. That's right. Those D words, they're so Those hard. D- they're tricky. Like, dick, that's a hard thing. <laughs> Last time, early far out prediction, quote, and there are no microtransactions will be a buzzword of E3. Mm. EA kind of did that, but I wouldn't say it's a buzzword that was across all of E3. All right. Well, I was going to give you a point, but you just shut yourself down. All right. No, I'll, I'll take the point. I'll take the point. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. I'll give you a point. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't really. That didn't stick out to me, so I'm not going to count it. You're not going to count. Okay, I'll erase. I'm not going to count that. So you, you go for mine. it now. Are you ready? At yeah. least five games will have a battle royale mode. Thumbs down. We'll see no new AAA titles from Microsoft first party. Well, we did. We saw Gears Five. We saw Halo Infinite. We saw well, something else. I'm sure. Uh, Bethesda is going to win E3. I'm going to give that a thumbs down. We'll discuss why in a little bit. Cyberpunk 2077. That's all I wrote. I mean, they counts. I, they showed it I, off. Well, well, I don't remember what I said about it. All I know is that I wrote it. I'm not going to count that. No, I'll count it because they, it was there. I don't take it. EA will have another athlete segment. As we discussed, yes, they de- they not only had a Steelers player, but also several <laughs> esports athletes. <laughs> Boom. All that right. was our like, general far-off predictions. I now have two points. You have one point. I have one point. All right, so let's go to our third-party predictions. I am at a slight disadvantage here because I had five total predictions. You had two Third per. party. That's right. I had eight total. So I'll go through mine first since I went first last time. All right. Uh, Kingdom Hearts is going to be given an early 2019 re- release window. I would count January as early 2019. All right. So I'm going to give myself a point there. Final Fantasy VII Remake shown off. Obviously, it stole the show at Square Enix's conference. I'm going to give myself Whoa. a point for that one. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Um, Bethesda will announce Doom 2 coming this year. So they announced it, but it's not coming this year. So do you want to do half point or just no point? Well, they announced Doom Eternal. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also not coming this year. <laughs> it is Doom 2. How can I possibly have guessed the subtitle they were going to use for it? So, here's the thing. Actually, I was listening to an episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily from yesterday where they called Pete Hines, or it was, it was Gamecast, they called Pete Hines on the show, mm-hmm. and they said, hey, Doom 2... Blah, blah, blah. And he immediately responded, there is no Doom 2. There's Doom Eternal. So I would say, no, Doom 2 does not exist. Okay, but it's the sequel to Doom was the point. It is the sequel to Doom. But there's... Okay, it's, it I'll is give you Doom... a half a point. I'll give you a half like, a point. Half a point, yeah. Because Pete Hines is going to correct because he's a marketing exec. He's going to have them call it by what it's really <laughs> called. <laughs> All right. Um, every third party will have a game coming to Switch this year. That Ooh, happened. did it? Yeah. What about Square Enix? Well, Square Enix has um, um, Octopath Traveler coming this year. Was that shown off at their conference? Yeah. They showed it at their own conference. All right. I. You seem very you. suspicious. Wink, wink, wink. They definitely showed it off at their conference. But even if they, sh- they still showed it off at Nintendo's event. So either yeah, way, but, a third but party... we're talking about third-party conferences. We okay. We're talking about these predictions. But they did show it at the third-party conference as well. Um, go Division on, go two, on. Division 2 will not have a Battle Royale mode. You got a point there. Mm-hmm. Got a point there. Um, so that's three and a half points. You are at correct. Is that That's all of your... Third parties, all of your yeah. your third-party stuff? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. That's so crazy. And you got three and a half points total after... Sorry, I'm stalling so this webpage can load about Square Enix's conference because they announced Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Just Cause 4, Kingdom Hearts 3, Babylon's Fall, The Quiet Man, and that's it. No Octopath Traveler. They definitely showed it there, didn't they? They did not. Hmm. So I guess you have two and a half points, Holden. I'm I'm looking at this because that's your notes. Maybe you just didn't mention it. <clears throat> I'm looking this up. Oh, no, that believe... was not my notes. That was on uh, techadvisor.co.uk. Everything shown? That was uh, Square Enix 2018 E3 announcements. You look into it. I'm going to go with my third-party shit. Are you ready? Doom yep. 2 revealed coming in October. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll give you I'll give no points for that because point. it's not called Doom Two. It's called Doom. I Eternal. give you a half, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Here's another great one. Prey DLC drops this week. Boom! Get a point for that, motherfucker. That was a good call. That Everything was a very else, good call. I think, is pretty much bad. Are you ready? Prince of Persia <laughs> returns. Nope. For Honor movie. Nope. Battlefield 5 will have a Battle Royale free-to-play download. Nope. Oh. Uh, I found it. I got a point for Square Enix. Do you? From Kutaku. Sorry, I'm interrupt you here. From Kutaku. Uh, new trailer for Dragon Quest uh, Eleven was shown off, and another little trailer for Octopath Traveler. Boom. They had a trailer for it. Well, son of a fucking bitch. Uh, that's on You're Kutaku. Right. All right. You're back up to three and a half. We're tied right now. Now, here's another one from EA. <clears throat> Anthem releasing March 2019, 12 minutes or more focused on Anthem. They spent 10, didn't they? What did I they feel spend? like you just grabbed that number out of your asshole. I don't know. What did they, what did they spend on it? I didn't time it, but I feel <laughs> like job. it was more than 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, I'm going to give it to you because they did spend a lot of time on it. Oh, hell yeah. I'll get a half a point for that because it's not coming March 2019. It's coming... February 22nd. 22nd. Like the rest of the world. The coming of Christ is February 22nd. <laughs> and then my last two Final Fantasy 16 revealed. That New definitely third happened. person IP non RPG action game revealed from Square Enix. Nope. Maybe The Quiet Man? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh, shit. Wait. What? You might have just given me a point. Third person IP. New. Yeah. That checks all the boxes. What were the boxes again? Another point. Third person, yep. new IP, non-RPG, action game. Yeah, I'd say that's a quiet man from what we know of, but yeah, that's what it looks Boom, like. Boom, Shaka Khan. See how generous I am? You're so generous. And that's so, going to come back to bite you because I'm not going to be as generous. Well, I, I, I already have checkboxes next to the ones I know I got, and I got one more prediction. I got one prediction right for all <laughs> three remaining conferences. We're going to go chronologically from here. Tell me about Xbox. All right, um, Crackdown 3 will be their big push for the end of 2018. <laughs> nope. No. Nope. Fallout 4 announced, or sorry, Fallout 4, Fable 4 announced with gameplay. Nope. nope. <laughs> Shadow of the Tomb Raider gameplay shown off. Yeah, that happened, didn't it? That happened, yeah. Boom. All right, here we go for me. Ready? So Next Halo play. game revealed, not called Halo 6, multiplayer only with Battle Royale being the flagship mode. I Maybe feel like I get for it. a half a point. Yep. Yeah. Then Xbox Game Pass becomes part of Xbox Live Gold. Nope. Cuphead DLC announced. Boom. Point Shaka Khan. Holden, tell me about your PlayStation predictions. Oof, all of these terribly incorrect predictions. <laughs> <laughs> Death Stranding, Last of Us Part 2, and Ghost of Shima all given 2019 release windows. No release windows were given no for anything, so anything. definitely yep. wrong. This is my favorite one I got wrong, because it's not even a wrong prediction. It's the wrong event <laughs> that it happened. <laughs> Shadows Die Twice is Tenchu. Trailer shown is still cryptic, coming 2019. <laughs> I mean, technically, Aww. they said it's coming 2019, but I'm giving myself no points for this because it was yeah. the wrong event. Wrong event, It's not man. Tenchu, and it wasn't Cryptic. We know exactly what the game is. Yep. So no points will be awarded to Holden for Sony because I also got this wrong. Sony will announce PSN changes, including ability to change name. Nope. I think they said, should we do the changing name or should we have a guy play the banjo? And they went with guy playing the banjo. <laughs> Shut up. So yeah, that's what happened. Oh, man, that's okay, because I also got zero. Are you ready? <laughs> Deep Down, re-revealed for PS4 as an online multiplayer game, free-to-play Monster Hunter-style gameplay. Nope. Nope. This one was close. AAA Harry Potter game revealed, coming this fall in time for Fantastic Beasts PSVR exclusive mode. And then finally, the Order 1876 sequel revealed, called 1877. Nothing nope. for PlayStation. Nothing for PlayStation. So Wrap us up. You got Nintendo. I'm curious which do you think I should get for points in these because okay. most of these are wrong, but there's hints of being hints correct. Hints of garlic? Hints of okay. garlic. <laughs> Smash will be the hints dominant of game of all of Nintendo's E3 events. It's releasing September alongside the online service. I it was definitely the that. most prominent game, easily. Yep. It was the really only big game they had, but it's definitely not coming September, and it's not coming with the online service. 
So you think half a point for Smash? <clears throat> half a point, yep. Okay. Um, this one I got 100% correct. Link's Awakening remake for 3DS shown off during Treehouse. It's coming before October. <laughs> mm, nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> um, Metroid Prime 4 will not get a teaser, but the Prime Trilogy release date given for 2018. Mm, nope. Nope. Not even half a point? Because it wasn't shown the, tre- the teaser for Metroid Prime 4. Um, read it again. I need to hear it exactly as it was written. <laughs> Metroid Prime 4 will not get a teaser. Prime Trilogy release date given for 2018. Mm. Okay. I'll give half, half of that point. is true. Half that happened. Okay. So I get one whole point. <clears throat> All right. Here's the, where the magic happens. Yep. GTA 5 on Switch, including GTA Online. Happened. Not. <laughs> Smash Bros. is new, doesn't include some of the Wii U characters, replaces Dr. Mario with wedding outfit Odyssey Mario. Very, it that was, was... It was new. It is a new Smash Bros. It is a new Smash a Bros., but the, it is all the characters. I'll give it you half a all point. all the characters. Yeah, you I'll give will. you half a point. Yeah, you fucking will. And then I said Metroid Prime 4 story trailer. Nope. Not even... Not even... Some points, no, none, Holden, none points. So with all of that, you walk out the door with five and a half points. Six and a half. One, two, three, four, five. I got five and a half, bro. I have one for my far out predictions. Three point yep. five for third party predictions. One for Microsoft, and one for Nintendo. I must have missed one. Yeah, six and a half. And I walk out with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I beat you Ooh. by half a point. Very close. It was that Doom Eternal, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just say we did pretty well, though. I mean, yeah, we, pretty we did. are hard. Cuphead DLC, Prey DLC dropping this week. I fucking, you, I'm an insider. Yeah, I knew you what got was going some good on. stuff there. You got some good stuff there. And me guessing that Link's Awakening remake for 3DS is going to be oh there. My I God, mean, great dude. prediction on my part. What am I going to eat for breakfast tomorrow? Can you tell that future? <laughs> I said my actually my proudest prediction was though Kingdom Hearts early 2019 release window. I'm very proud of that one. Yeah, that was yeah. a good guess, especially since they said 2018, man. Yep. Boom. How do you like to proceed with the remainder of our E3 wrap up? So we're, I think we're going to talk about our biggest disappointments, our top five games of E3. Who won E3? But I just wanted to. What were some kind of just not necessarily like highlight games, but like some games that you like kind of liked what you saw. Um, I have five games Okay. that I think were my favorite of E3. Okay. That I really enjoyed the, the showings of. Number one, top of the list, Last of Us Part Two. Mm-hmm. Seeing that demo, all of the contextual animations, the characters and their AI, the way that it works, seeing Ellie and all the new gameplay mechanics like that, it, the story, like, it, yeah, that blew my mind. I'm excited as fuck for that. Resident Evil 2 Remake, so pumped for that. It looks so good. All of the impressions I'm hearing from it, from people who played it, say that it's fantastic, and I can't freaking wait for Resident Evil 2 Remake. Obviously, Cyberpunk 20... Cyberpunk. God damn it. Cyberpunk 2077. I just said the title in my predictions, and it happened, and it looks fucking awesome. I can't wait to hear more about that and when it's coming. And then Sekiro. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. The not Tenchu game. Like, <laughs> I'm excited to go back to a Dark Souls-esque world mm-hmm. after Dark Souls Remastered on Switch, of course. And uh, I think it's really rad that it's like that samurai ninja looking mm-hmm. stuff. That looks cool. And then finally, of course, Smash Bros. Ultimate. Oh, yeah. Smash Bros. Ultimate, I think, is like... that. That's what most people were talking about after E3. I think it literally was the most tweeted about game during E3. Yeah. And yeah. our podcast performance, like, obviously, of the four shows we put out, that one almost, like, doubled everything else. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a lot of hype around that game. Um, yeah. So I, I, I'll say that. I'll go through my list. I'm going to go from five to one. But I was really thinking about putting Cyberpunk 2077, but we only got a trailer. If I had seen the demo that all these journalists got to see. The BCD, Behind Closed Doors. I it, pro- it definitely would have been up there, but I've yeah. only seen the trailer. That's the only reason why I'm holding it back. It looks great. I mean, obviously, I'm playing The Witcher Three because I'm excited about Cyberpunk 2077. Obviously, but I didn't include it. So here's my list from five to one. Number five, Hitman Two. The level they showed off is so cool looking. It is oh, a yeah. 
racetrack in Miami, and you have to blow up Ooh. one of the cars. Ami Ami. Looks so cool. Number four, Smash Bros. Ultimate. I think it looks really cool. I'm not the biggest Smash Bros. fan, but I'm definitely really excited for it. I yeah. think they showed off a really impressive game. I mean, bringing back all the characters, balancing all of those characters, that is so damn impressive. Yeah. Ridley looks really cool. Um, I love the facial animations of the different characters when they're fighting. That's hysterical. There's, it looks like a really solid game. Yeah. Totes. Number three, Resident Evil 2 remake. Uh, uh, oh, my gosh. Uh. You saw the gameplay demo for this as well, right? The 12-minute demo? No, I did it. There's a 12-minute gameplay demo, and I kind of is... don't want to see it. I kind of saw the trailer, and I'm like, fuck it, I'm out. I'm ready to play this game. I don't want to see anything else. Perry called me a chicken, but I got scared watching the, that gameplay. Like, it looks yeah, so good. Did. Like, thinking about chicken. playing that, I got scared. It looks Ka-da, really, ka-ka. really good. Unbelievable gore, gore effects. Cuckoo <laughs> chow. Has anyone in this family ever heard of chicken before? Chickens don't clap. <laughs> <laughs> um, number two, uh, Last of Us Part Two. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh. I can't wait for this game. It looks so good. What a what a good kiss. Yeah, a good kiss, but I, like you said, the 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 uh, animations work is incredible, but also the AI for the enemies, like you just said. Holy crap, it looks so yeah. impressive. Like, hiding under a car does not make you safe. They can look there. Like, you have to be on edge at all times. There are some things. There's an article on IGN by, I forget who put it up, but there's, a, like, an in-depth interview they did with some of the game designers, specifically around, like, gameplay mechanics and AI, and there are things, like, the enemies will work together. Like, they know where you are, like, a general mm-hmm. vicinity, but they don't know exactly within that. So they'll work together. They'll triangulate themselves and kind of close in on you till they find you. They will also shout, like, they. what I loved about this thing, I'm not going to gush about this much more, but the, like, no, gush, the fact that do. every enemy in that trailer, or every enemy in that demo, like, was calling the other ones by names. Yeah. And they're just, like, random-ass people. Like, that makes you feel like you're in a world, but they're calling each other by name and saying, "Oh my God, have you seen so and so? No, I need help over here." But like, well, like that kind of shit. Here's here's a great example too of that same note. Normally in the game, you make a noise, then suddenly every enemy knows where you are, which is very yep. unnatural. Whereas this is one enemy will hear you and then calls out to the other people to say, yep. "Hey, I heard something over here," which then prompts those characters to come over and check it out. That's a really Subtle, nice touch. Yeah. And then you hide in a bush, and then 10 seconds later, oh, I guess it must have been the wind. <laughs> Just like real life. Yep. I found a dead body here. Nah, it's probably nothing. I'm going to keep walking. <laughs> um, number one most exciting game. Uh, this is one I battled with a lot, because I I've, I've kind of go back and forth, but Fallout 76 has me so goddamn pumped. you're so up that game's butt i, I love so it so am it it just sounds really fascinating i love the idea of this massive world that's only populated by a few other humans i'm excited for you and fallout 76 and the beautiful life you're gonna live together <laughs> but just knowing it's not that far away is also as exciting about it yeah it's not that far off I, and honestly too like november within three days Pokemon, Hitman 2, and Fallout 76 come out. Within three oh, days, shit. those games come out. I'm going to buy the fuck out of Pokemon. Yeah, I'm getting all three of them, but I'm like, damn. On the same day? Or well, within three days? I, well, I want all of them. Maybe I won't get them at the... Like, I'm probably going to hold off on Pokemon first, if anything. Oh, my God. You hate me, don't you? <laughs> you just don't want to trade with me. Oh, fine, Chad. Fine. But you're not going to get Fallout 76 to play with no, me. No, I'm not going to get no. Fallout 76. I just, I, I'm very impressed by what I saw with that. I totally get why people are skeptical. I get it. But I think it sounds like a really unique, interesting concept. It just makes so much sense for Fallout. I want that game. I want it so bad. You but that's out of that, Chad. You should go steal it. What are what are some other games you had in kind of consideration that you really enjoyed seeing but they didn't really show a lot of? But they didn't really show? Or did you, just, you didn't put it on your list, I should. Um, Spider Man. Spider Man. I struggled with should I put Spider Man on there, but like, of course I, I freaking was excited by it. And while they showed you know more of the villains and some of the more powers and things like that, I feel like the big part of the Spider Man at E three this year was getting hands on with it, and we didn't get hands on with it because we aren't ginormous media outlets mm-hmm. for going to E three. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I felt like that was too much of a retread for me personally from last mm-hmm. year. 
Yeah, and Death Stranding. I don't know. I don't know. I I was I was honestly just very pleased with most of E3 this year. I was pleased too. It's definitely really hard to pick um a few things. I think Cyberpunk 2077, like I said, I can't wait. I'm excited. I just want to see more of that. We've been waiting so long, and then they get like a two-minute trailer. I wanted more than that. Um, And Sekiro, like I'm very excited about Sekiro. Yeah. But I don't feel like – it's not cryptic, but I don't feel like I really understand how it works and how it's different than Bloodborne. Like if you if you watch the trailer, there's a lot of things that seem very different. Like, yeah. again, you can die and come back to life. I want to know how the mechanic works. That could really be a make-it-or-break-it thing for that game. And I don't think it's going to be a, like a, a handout, like, you can never die. But I'm curious how that plays out. It apparently has zero RPG elements to it. Well, not zero, but very, very few RPG elements yeah. to it as well. So I just, I'm, I'm, there's so many questions I have about that game that I can't, like, put in my top five most yeah. excited games. Because I don't know enough about it quite yet. Whereas I feel like everything I put in here I know a good amount about. Um, there's one more game this is just something too is that Kingdom Hearts 3 was shown off I have yet to see anything about that game that actually impresses me and maybe that's because I ha- I've only played the PSP version of that game but to me it just looks like a next like a next gen remake of Kingdom Hearts I don't see anything in it that seems like oh wow this is a next gen version of it it just looks like a better looking version of Kingdom Hearts has always been I think if you and I had more knowledge of Kingdom Hearts, we would have very different opinions. Because I think apparently so. everything about it is completely different. Really? It looks but the I, exact I've, same yeah, to I, me. I personally don't know anything about it. So, yeah, yeah. to me it's like, oh, that's just more of the same. But, no, apparently it's completely different. Interesting. But it's just not our it's not our game, so it's not something that we follow. Yeah. I was disappointed by it. I just – I don't know. I don't, I don't get it, I guess. If you like Kingdom Hearts in that series, you should fucking stop listening to us forever. <laughs> <laughs> they already like had. They actually heard me say that. They're like, "What a fucking idiot!" And they just are moving on now. Uh, what were your biggest disappointments of E3? You know, I was trying to think of this, and it was actually really hard for me to think of any disappointments mm. because I did enjoy a lot of it. But I did settle on Square Enix having a conference. <laughs> like their entire conference was a big letdown because it was literally all shit we've seen before. Mm-hmm. And quite honestly, Smash Bros. release date. Yeah. Like, the fact that it's December 7th, like, that's super far away. But, again, it was a great E3. It was, I wasn't it was a great E3. I wasn't disappointed by much there, at all. There, I think there was, I think, yeah, Smash Bros. release day I was disappointed by. I was really disappointed by Nintendo's conference in general, honestly. Really? Yeah. I mean, yeah, Super Mario Party, cool. I'm still not going to buy that game. No. Yeah, I'm going to buy Smash. I didn't need to see 25 minutes of that in that conference. That could have been yeah. trickled out through the treehouse. It just, it wasn't a great, it was not a good direct, I don't think. I think that people got really up, excited about it and amped up about it because they showed a lot of Smash. I, I think that's it. And yeah, that's that's cool and all, but I don't know, I just didn't, I was really let down by it. I was very much let down by Nintendo's conference. Um, EA's, I think, was a big letdown in general. <laughs> um, but I, th- I really think the, the, the crown of the worst conference for me was actually Nintendo's. Wow, because I don't think there's anything conference. Worst conference, yeah. Worse than Square yeah. and EA. Well, Square doesn't count as a conference. <laughs> that just didn't Hold even on. happen. I'm revoking your Nintendo fanboy card. It was. I just think it was the weakest one in the sense of think about the potential they had going into it and what they did with that potential. I think it was the weakest one. Interesting. I know uh, Holden's hot take there, but I didn't like it. And the more I think about it, the least I like it. And it's probably because I am such a big fan of why it's I didn't like it as much. Because I wanted Metroid. I wanted to see Animal Crossing. Yeah. I wanted to see these other, other games show up. And I didn't get that. I got a lot of Smash Bros. And a lot of which I didn't think needed to be there. Yep. So... But then again, I'm still going to buy Smash Bros. So it wasn't obviously a huge A lockdown. fucking course. Yeah, yeah, and you better. We'll better <laughs> battle. I'm not good at Smash Bros, by the way. No, neither am I. It's fine. You'll probably still beat me. Fucking great. Yes! <laughs> I'm actually going to buy a Nintendo Online account for my brother and Smash Bros for my brother. That way we can play together as well. Family plan. Family yep. plan. Exactly. Family plan at lunch. So comes the big question now, Chad. Who won E3? I think Who we're going to be in direct agreement on this one. E3. Holden, 
I think there are two ways that you can answer this question. Okay. Way number one is which company had the best press conference? Okay. Way number two is which company at the end of all of E3 left with the most mind share? Who were people talking the most about? And, like, the conversation going forward the week after E3, like, who dominated that conversation? Sure, but this is your I think win. those are two different people. I'm curious your answer here, but I, I want to know what yours is. For like, the what was best, in your mind share? For the best conference, I would say probably Microsoft's conference. Mm-hmm. I would say they went they, – they – had a lot of really great surprising announcements, whether it's from the studios or a couple of the Sekiro games being off. there was surprising. Yep, Sekiro, Gears Five, like the some surprise Halo Infinite. Seeing a trailer for that, like mm-hmm. they had some good surprises. They had great pacing through most of it. They it had was some... the only well paced conference. Uh, yeah, it, it was the only well paced one. And they said all the things they needed to say to comfort everyone about mm-hmm. Microsoft as a competitor for the next five six years. Yep. Um, who I think had the most, like, who won E3 mindshare wise, whether it's mine or like the public opinion, like, Sorry, I oh my God, Siri, stop it. Um, I think that has to be, I'm, I'm struggling between Nintendo and their dominance with Smash because mm-hmm. it was three days of Smash. Yeah. And Sony and the conversation around The Last of Us 2 and Spider-Man, and Death Stranding, and, like, all of those titles that they showed off that, from a technical standpoint, has been like, oh, my God, did you know that this is how this works in The Last of Us? Did you know that, like, oh, these stories, details leaking about Death Stranding, and people still don't know what the fuck it is about? Or the the countless people that I have listened to podcasts and read articles about how fucking amazing it, it feels to swing around New York City as Spider-Man and that people are just standing there for all 15 minutes of their demo just swinging around the city. Like, I, that is another big thing. Like, they might have won E3 in my mind just from the mind share that, and the conversation that's happening afterwards. What are your thoughts? Um, I definitely know what you mean by the mind share and that kind of stuff. I, I get that. Um... I just kind of went off of how I feel personally, and I agree with Microsoft. I really think Microsoft stole this E3. They had the most to lose, and they came out. Here, all right, here's my here's here, here's the big reason why for me. When it comes to next gen, next gen, because of how they are taking it so seriously, they bought these studios. They're showing off Halo 6, which I'm not going to buy, or Halo Infinite, which I'm not going to buy probably, but like they're putting it on the forefront there. I think they're kind of showing we're getting ready for the next gen, and we're going to start off really strong. Is this the vibe that I got from this? And yeah. Sony doesn't have to think that far ahead because, again, they're on top. But I was kind of convinced that maybe I should consider an Xbox in the next gen. And, I mean, people who listen to this podcast regularly know that I have been saying Microsoft is doomed and that they're, doomed. I mean, not in a serious sense, doomed, but like I think that they were going to have serious struggles going forward, and that they convinced me that they are heading in the right direction, and they're heading in it, you know, with with confidence and and moving forward strong. And they totally convinced me that, hey, wanna what? If an Xbox came out like 360 PS3, Xbox Two comes out a year before the next PlayStation, because PlayStation apparently is coming 2021, Xbox might be coming 2020. So they're saying. Uh, I would get one. Like I'm convinced that if they can pull off what they're talking about, I'm I'm in. And that yeah. was a big moment for me. I'm like, if I got that out of one press conference, that's damn impressive. That's yeah. really damn impressive. And I'm surprised you're right with the mind share that things like Microsoft Studios purchases, it's been talked about, but not the way that Smash has been talked about, not the way that Last of Us Part Two has been talked about. But I think it's probably the most important announcement of all of E3. Yeah. So I think that they they want it. Um, without a doubt for me. It was the only conference going to, in terms of presentation, the only conference that held my attention the entire time. I mean, oh, yeah, what sure. the hell, Sony? Why do you have the banjo player and the intermission <laughs> and like Ubisoft with their stupid dancing routine and EA with <laughs> Command & Conquer mobile oh, app and God, the announcers? Yes. And, I mean, yeah, Smash stuff was cool with Nintendo, but it was 25 minutes of Smash. And then Square Enix having a conference. 
<laughs> was unbearable. <laughs> Microsoft was the only one who had a good event. Wait, to, you forgot to show about the, the Bethesda band for Rage Two. Oh my gosh, that was unbearable. I mean, they saved at the end of Todd Howard being a boss on stage at the end of that, but yeah, it was just Microsoft is the only one who really impressed me. I mean. Sekiro, I was floored when I saw that at their conference. Cyberpunk 2077, floored when I saw that at their conference. I mean, they're putting serious money behind Xbox. Microsoft is. And that's a great sign for me. So that, that's why they undoubtedly won E3 for me. But I get what you're saying, though. Like, their games did not get talked about nearly as much as Nintendo's and Sony's games. Yeah. But I think that going forward, Microsoft's con- this conference will be seen as a very important one for Microsoft. And just my own personal feelings of I think they did the best. Dude, you have good opinions. Oh, thanks, Ed. You had good opinions, too. That's why we do this Fuck together. You. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't fight on this podcast, which is why we have to bring it to an end this evening, because we're about to have a fight. <laughs> uh, no, for ser- for serious, everyone, thank you for listening. Whoa, whoa, Go whoa. Go play whoa, whoa. Barf. Whoa. whoa, what? Whoa, what? What, whoa? Do we have any closing, like, weekly forum stuff to do? No. We have none. <laughs> okay. Well, then we'll play Barf, which is the day six way kind of divided. That's, that's Bye, everybody. No subscriber in our audience. I forgot to do a poll. We're talking about the next... Not no, we did do a poll. We did do a poll. Didn't we do a did poll we? last week about E3? Oh, we did a lot of polls last week. Oh, do you don't remember them? I, I, can, Chad. I can look it up. Jesus Christ. <laughs> our Lord and Savior. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. You guys don't know this, but Chad is devoutly religious. <laughs> it's pronounced religious. Religious. And that's how he saves it. Let's Here we go. Really Actually, not religious. so for the real quest- real answer to your question, our last poll was on June 18th. Who won E3 2018? Your options were the fans, Elijah Wood, advertisers on IGN, or Nintendo. <laughs> And Elijah Wood with 43% of the vote. I voted for Elijah Wood. I know that. I believe I also did. That was really awkward when he was on stage. (laughs) (laughs) So neither of us were correct. Elijah Wood won. Oh, no, this is also a great one. Which new Smash Bros. Ultimate character are you most excited for? Inkling, Daisy, Ridley, or Star Wars' Daisy Ridley? (laughs) She won with 46% of the vote. (laughs) So those are our polls for the weekly forum. Play the goddamn game. Deus Ex Mankind Divided. That's not for the fans. That's for us. Play it. We need to play it. If you guys have been playing it and you're better than us, write in and tell us your experience with it. Like Spooder Scooter did with uh, Metro Metro Exodus. Yes. And how Fez told us, it's not his game. (laughs) 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 Um, And then we have some cool opportunities for you guys to participate and get money coming again next month oh money 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 hey we love you guys have a good rest of your uh life goodbye toodles